All right, in 4-2, we're still talking about triangles today, and our two objectives for the video are to find the measures of interior and exterior angles of triangles, and to apply theorems about the interior and exterior angles of triangles. There's a lot of theorems that we're going to be talking about in the video. I think we're going to talk about three or four, so you will definitely want to have out that yellow cheat sheet so you can add on to it. Okay, so today we're talking about interior and exterior angles in triangles. The first theorem is called the triangle sum theorem. So on that yellow cheat sheet, you can put triangle sum theorem. Again, this is just a conditional statement. It says if you have a triangle, so in the hypothesis box, if you have a triangle, then the conclusion is that all the angles, the sum of all the angles, add up to be 180 degrees. And we talked about that in class today, and I can prove it to you uh, in class. I can, we could actually do a proof, or I can show you another way, um, an easy way to think about it. So I'll prove this to you tomorrow in class. Um, the first thing, we're going to use this uh, tonight. Uh, to, to, I'll give you problems like this, and you'll have to just tell me all the other uh, missing information. So here's an example of a triangle, and I want you to fill in all the missing angles. So there's a lot of ways you guys can um, can approach this problem. I I always look for which triangle because there's three triangles in this picture, right? I always look for which triangle has the most information about it already. So for example, if I wanted to look at the whole triangle, I would be a little stuck because I know about the 40 degrees for this angle. I don't know anything about this angle and I'm missing part of it. If I wanted to start with the, the smallest triangle, all you know is about one angle. Only, you only know about the 12 degrees. So I'm going to focus on this yellow triangle because I know about two of those angles. And the triangle sum theorem says that the three angles have to add up to be 180 degrees. So to find this missing piece first, I would add up these two angles. So 62 plus 40 is 102. And then I would subtract one, um, subtract that from 180. So let's see, that would be um, 77 degrees. So now I know this one is 77 degrees. Once I have that, again, um, you can tackle whichever triangle you really want to. But look and see which, which triangles maybe you have the most information about. Um, if I wanted to do the entire triangle, the whole thing, well now I know that this angle is 40 degrees. I know that these two angles add up to be the whole thing. So this whole angle is going to be, what, um, 89? And so if I wanted to find out this missing one, because again I'm looking at this whole big triangle, triangle WYZ. So then I'd have to add up the 40 and the 89. So 40 plus 89. Is 129 and then subtract that from 180 to get this angle. So this angle would be what? 79? 50? 50 degrees? And then you were missing one more angle. To find measure of angle, let me erase some of this stuff so we don't get confused. To find the um, measure of angle WXY, again, there's lots of ways you can think about it. You can look at this small triangle if you want to, or you know that these two angles make a linear pair. That's the approach I would make because I like linear pairs better. But if you want to look at it in terms of this small triangle, the small uh, triangle WXY, and add up the angles and subtract from 180, you're more than welcome to. But this angle, these are a linear pair. So all you would have to do is 180 minus 62, and that'll get you your answer of, uh, let's see, 7, 7, 8, 18? No, what am I doing? 118. 118 degrees. Sweet. So this angle is 118 degrees. So we're going to use the triangle sum theorem in, in pictures um, to find missing angle measures. That's the easiest type of question I could give you. Harder um, uh, corollaries. Corollaries are just like babies of the theorem. So if now that you know that all angles add up to be to be 180 degrees in a triangle. Well, if we wanted to talk specifically about a 90 a right triangle, right, you already know that one of those angles is 90 degrees. So the corollary to the triangle sum theorem says that these two other angles also have to add up to be 90 degrees. And that's what this says. And you can write it down on, on your cheat sheet if you want to. Pretty much says that the acute angles, the, the other angles that are not the right angle, have to add up to be 90 degrees because this one's already 90 degrees. So for example, if this one was 30, you don't have to say, okay, 90 plus 30 
is 120 and then subtract that from 180 to figure out this third angle. You can say, well, this angle, these two acute angles have to add up to be 90, so this one is 60. Either way, you're going to get the right answer. And we talked about this second corollary in class today. If we have an equiangular or an equilateral triangle, all the angles are going to have to add up to be 60 degrees because they're all congruent to each other and they all have to add up to be 180 degrees. So we talked about those are just corollaries and it'll help you approach problems faster. So some questions that you might see um, and from your book, it says the measure of one of the acute angles in a right triangle, that's important that it's a right triangle, is 63.7 degrees. What's the measure of the other acute angle? So some people like to draw it out and that's totally fine. So I know it's a right triangle. I know one of them 63.7. You could add up 90 plus 63.7 and then subtract it from 180. But since you know that it's a right triangle, these two smaller ones have to add up to be 90. So you can do you can just do a shortcut and do 90 minus 63.7 and that'll get you your answer. Now I want you to notice that this is the shortcut. Now I could make this question harder by not giving you a number, but by giving you a variable. So for example, this second this next question says one of the acute angles in a right triangle measures two x degrees. So it's the same exact problem except instead of a number I gave you a variable. All you're gonna do, you, you can't solve for x. You just have to put 90 minus 2x. So whatever they give you, you're just gonna take 90 and subtract. So this one was 90 minus 63.7, you could solve. This one, if they give you a variable, you can't solve. This is your answer, 90 minus 2x. Okay? All right. And then, um, and, and we can talk more about the algebra behind that later in class. So we've talked about one huge theorem. We have one more theorem that we need to talk about. But before we do that, you, let's break down some vocabulary. An interior angle is inside of a triangle. An exterior angle is outside of a triangle, and it's formed by, if you extend one of the sides of a triangle, it's going to make a linear pair. So an exterior angle would be 4. It's Notice that I extended this side of the triangle, so angle 3 and angle 4 make a linear pair, and angle 4 is considered an exterior angle. Now, if angle 4 is the exterior angle, there's also two angles that are called remote interior angles. And remote interior angles, what I, how I do to um, think about this is I imagine my exterior angle, angle 4, has a remote control. And it, you wouldn't, it wouldn't make sense, you wouldn't need a remote control if the, if the TV is right next to you, right? <laughs> Unless you're really lazy. So the purpose of a remote control is that you don't have to get up and you can press buttons or change things from, uh, from a remote location. So. I imagine a remote control at the exterior angle, and the remote interior angles are going to be across from it. So angle 2 is a remote interior angle, and angle 1 is a remote interior angle. So I'm going to write that down. Angle 1 and angle 2 are remote interior angles to, uh, with respect to angle 4. Okay, the reason why that's important is because there's a relationship between the exterior angles and its remote interior angles. If you think about everything we've learned so far about triangles and linear pairs, I'm just going to give um, angle 4 a, a, a number, 100 degrees. I'm just saying it's 100 degrees. Since these are a linear pair, angle 3 would have to be 80 degrees. Now, let's learn what, let's talk, take what we've used from the triangle sum theorem. These three angles, angle 1 plus angle 3, plus measure of angle 3 have to add up to be 180 degrees. Now if we use, sub, that's the triangle sum theorem, that's what the triangle sum theorem says. Now if I substitute in uh, 80 degrees, I know now, and if I simplify, subtract from both sides, I now know that measure of angle 1 plus measure of angle 2 has to equal 180, 100 degrees. If I added up these two angles, they have to equal 100 degrees. So these two added up equal 100 degrees. And wouldn't you know it, that is exactly the same thing as angle 4. This always happens with triangles and the exterior angles, and so we gave it a name. It's called the exterior angle theorem. If you were going to write this on your cheat sheet, I would write this down as the name. I would draw this picture down in my hypothesis. So if you have an exterior angle, we'll call that 4, the two remote interior angles, the ones that are across from it, are going to be, if you add them up, the sum of the two remote interior angles is going to equal that exterior angle. And that's going to help us when we solve problems. So I could give you a nice problem that looks like this. This is considered an easier problem. 
this angle is the 5x minus 60, and then these are the two remote interior angles. This angle is the exterior angle. So I know if I add those two up, 15 plus that 2x plus 3, it's going to equal this exterior angle, 5x minus 60. Okay, um, again, and that goes back to what we were talking about. If this is 100 degrees, then these two added up have to add up to be 100 degrees. I just made this one a little bit harder because I gave you variables, but now you can solve for x. And then once you have what x is, you can solve for a number of things. You can solve for measure of angle ABC. You could solve for measure of angle BCA. You could solve for the exterior angle BCD. So let's go ahead and do that really fast. If we subtract the 2x from both sides, let's see, now I have 18 equals 3x minus 60. And then if I add it, now I have 78 equals 3x. And if I divide by 3, what do I get? Uh, 20... 20, uh, uh, oh, brain fart, 26? Okay, so I have x equals 26, and then all I would have to do is plug it in. So 2 times 26 plus 3 will get me this angle. Um, and then, uh, let's see, what's that? 52 plus 3, so this is 55 degrees. And then I don't even have to plug it in here, right? Because I know that these two remote interior angles have to add up to be this one. So this should be 80 degrees. And then if I wanted to subtract it from 180, since this is 80 degrees, that means this angle would have to be 100 degrees. Hopefully I did my math right, right? I could give you one harder problem, and that would be a word problem, kind of. It says, in triangle D, at the measure of an exterior angle, at G is 126 degrees. Measure of angle H is 6x minus 1, and measure of angle J is 5x plus 17. Fine, measure of angle J. The reason why this one's a little bit harder is because I didn't give you a picture. So let's go ahead and let's draw triangle D, E, F. And that doesn't even make sense. Oh, wait, let's do G, H, J. Sorry, I mushified two problems together. Okay, so in triangle G, H, J. G, H, J. Okay, there's my triangle. Now it says uh, the measure of an exterior angle at G is 126 degrees. So if I extended this triangle at G, this angle is now 126 degrees. It says measure of angle H is 6x minus 1, and measure of angle J is 5x plus 17. Now that I have a picture, it's a little bit easier to set this one up because you know that this is your exterior angle, and these are your two remote interior angles since it's across and not touching, not adjacent to the 126. So if I wanted you to find the measure of angle J, you're going to have to solve for x, right? So you're going to say that 126, that exterior angle, equals the sum of the two remote interior angles. So you're going to solve for x and then you're going to plug in. And you're going to plug it in to angle j since that's what they're asking for. So three questions. We have one more theorem to learn tomorrow in class. The three problems I want you to do are um, on page, uh, page 227 and you're going to do numbers 6, 10, and 11. 6, 10, and 11. You're going to add these onto your notes. Tomorrow we'll talk about uh, one more theorem. Also, fun fact of the video, Sam Han, let's see, I'm going to, I'm going to, Sam Han Ophobia. <laughs> Sam Hanophobia is the fear of Halloween. <laughs> Very nice.